Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming for today's webinar. Um, we're just going to wait just for about 30 seconds or so for everyone to hop on. Um, and then we'll get started shortly. So thank you so much for coming today. We'll just wait for a few more seconds and we'll begin shortly. Okay, um, we will get started here soon. Um, hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the 2021 Poetry Out Loud judging webinar. I'm Lauren Miller, the Poetry Out Loud program manager at the National Endowment for the Arts. With me today is Justine Hacka from the Poetry Foundation. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we just have a few housekeeping items to note. Um, before we jump in and get started. We'll have a PowerPoint presentation and then a Q&A session at the end of the, this presentation. Please submit all questions to the Q&A box. And if you'd like us to address your questions today, please do so through um, that box. We do not have the chat enabled for this session. We'll do our best to address all questions we receive, but if we are unable to answer your question today, we will do our best to follow up with you individually. Also, this webinar is being closed captioned. If you'd like to turn the captions on, you can click the three dots with says more um, and then show subtitles. Also, um, this webinar is being recorded and it will be archived um, if you'd like to view this session in the future. And with that being said, um, we will jump in. So this is the agenda for today's webinar. Um, we will be going over the basics of the Poetry Out Loud program, discuss virtual competitions, which is a new avenue we've been taking during this 2020-21 school year. We'll go over how to best prepare to judge a Poetry Out Loud contest. Then we'll go into detail about the evaluation criteria and tips and best practices for judges. And then lastly, we'll have the Q&A section. So what is Poetry Out Loud? Poetry Out Loud is a national arts education program that encourages the study of great poetry by offering free educational materials and a dynamic recitation competition for high school students across the country. This program helps students master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about literary history and contemporary life. Poetry Out Loud is a partnership of the National Endowment for the Arts, the Poetry Foundation, and the state and jurisdictional arts agencies. Since 2005, Poetry Out Loud has grown to reach more than 4 million students and 65,000 teachers from 16,000 schools in every state the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. And we're really proud of its reach and its growth. So the program starts at the classroom, school, or at the local level with an area organization. Winners then may advance to a regional and or state competition, and then ultimately to the national finals. More than $100,000 in monetary prizes and stipends are awarded at the state and national level. And awards and placements are determined solely by the judges' scores based on the Poetry Out Loud evaluation criteria. And that's really why one of the reasons why judging recitations is one of the most important roles in Poetry Out Loud. The students, the teachers, parents, state arts agency staff, and partners have dedicated many hours for preparing for the program. And the integrity of the contest really rests on the work of the judges. As a judge, you will be on a panel with other judges who may be poets, educators, actors, librarians, authors, playwrights, arts administrators, poetry lovers, officials, and others. 
um, the best judging panels really bring a diverse array of perspectives. And by being a judge, you're bringing your point of view to this role. So now a little about the competition process. Students memorize and recite poems that are chosen from our Poetry Out Loud anthology, which is over 1,100 poems that range from classic to contemporary poetry. For the state and national levels, they must have three poems prepared. Students will take turns reciting poems, each one reciting one poem in each round. After each recitation, judges will immediately enter scores for each criterion, which we'll get into further detail in just a little bit. Judges will select one number per category. There are no half scores. Um, and judges will be submitting your scores to your contest organizer. Judges are not responsible for tabulating scores. Once scores are submitted, judges may not change or revisit their scores. So the image on the left is the more traditional contest evaluation sheet, which you can also find in our judges guide. While judging, you'll, you will likely see this contest evaluation sheet in in-person contests, which you would receive a hard copy for each student for each poem. For virtual contests, which we'll be focusing a bit more on today, you may be entering your scores on the digital contest evaluation sheet on the right, an Excel document, or perhaps a digital version of the PDF on the left. You can find both of these documents on poetryoutloud.org under organizing a contest. Also for virtual contests, the contest organizer may be collecting judges scores via their own system. There is a lot of flexibility on how organizers may conduct their virtual Poetry Out Loud contests, um, which we'll get into right now. So for the 2020-2021 Poetry Out Loud season, we strongly encourage teachers and organizers at all contest levels to hold virtual competitions. In order to ensure the safety and health of participating students and staff, the 2021 Poetry Out Loud National Finals will be virtual and a video submission based competition and it will be streamed on arts.gov. A video submission contest means that each student would record and save each recitation as a separate video file. Students would then submit those videos to the organizer who will ensure videos are working correctly and meet any film requirements before judges watch and submit scores. Depending on how your contest is organized, judges may have a dedicated date and time where the judging panel will convene, watch the recitations together as the organizer plays them one by one. Or you may receive the video recitation submissions from the contest organizer who will provide you a deadline on when to submit your scores. Another avenue organizers may choose to take is holding a POL contest on a video platform such as Zoom or Skype. This type of contest follows as an in-person contest would. Judges would submit scores for each criterion to the contest organizer to be tallied. Winners and runners up announced would be at the end of the show. If you'd like to see more information on virtual contests, including filming requirements, and tips we've provided for students, teachers, and organizers on how best to film a recitation. Um, you can find that as well as the other information, including the digital Excel score sheets we mentioned earlier on poetryoutloud.org under organizing a contest. So now we'll get into how to prepare to judge a Poetry Out Loud competition. So really the best way to first prepare to be a judge is to familiarize yourself with the evaluation criteria, which we'll go over today, and the other materials present in the judge's guide. The judge's guide is really the best resource for preparing to judge for Poetry Out Loud. Uh, the guide is available um, and can be found on poetryoutloud.org under teachers and organizers and then judging a contest page. In addition to the guide, you can also find other resources such as video of past 
Poetry Out Loud judges for providing advice on judging Poetry Out Loud contest on the website as well. Next, we really, really encourage judges to practice scoring prior to when they do so for the contest. This will help you become more familiar with the program and the pacing of a live contest. We have videos on our Poetry Out Loud YouTube page of past national finals and semifinals, as well as videos we collected in 2020 of past state champs and competitors, most of them reciting from home. We also have learning recitation videos on our website. We encourage you to watch those videos and practice scoring those recitations to really be best prepared for the contest. Next, read the poems. The contest organizer will provide the poems that will be recited in the competition prior to when you'll be judging. You may receive the poems via a PDF, a Word document, or links to the poems on the POL website. Please read the poems in advance. This will make you more familiar with the text of the poem prior to judging the recitations. And finally, attend any or orientation led by your contest organizer. This is important in any year, but particularly for this year, it's important to know your contest processes for this, their competition and to make sure any technology is working correctly. If you have any questions or run into any concerns, um, please be in touch with your contest organizer. They are there to help you and to answer any of your questions. Okay, now we'll get into talking about the evaluation criteria for Poetry Out Loud. So for a Poetry Out Loud recitation, the poem comes first. The students are reciting the work of other poets. So their primary responsibility is to really honor the text and the poet's voice. Students are trained in the art of recitation according to these specific Poetry Out Loud evaluation criteria, which includes physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, overall performance, and accuracy. We will go over the first five criteria on this list one by one. This is what the contest judges will be judging. There will be a separate accuracy judge for each competition who will be following the poem's text to ensure the poem is being recited accurately. You as a contest judge are not responsible for judging accuracy. Okay, now we'll delve into our first criterion, um, physical presence. This category is where a judge evaluates the student's presence, body language, and poise. The student should appear at ease, relaxed, and comfortable. They use appropriate body language, exude confidence, and maintain good posture. They have a connection with the audience or the viewer of their video recitation, nervous gestures, appearing stiff, or a lack of confidence would distract from scores. Overall, all the qualities of a student's physical presence works together to benefit the poem. So that is physical presence. Justine, do you have anything else to add for physical presence? Um, just to say that this may be, um, it as, as with probably most of these uh, categories, it's going to be a little bit different um, being, mm. being digital this year. Um, but I mean, physical presence used to be kind of like, oh, how they stand on the stage, you know, how they, they take up their space. So it's, it's a little bit different over um, a Zoom or, you know, Skype or, you know, or whatnot. But you can still see um, if the student is comfortable in what they're doing, mm -hmm. um, as long as they're not wooden, if they're not, um, if their gestures aren't distracting you from the poem, you don't want those to, to distract in, in ways. Um, and just if they're, you know, comfortable, basically, is yeah, no, what, we're, exactly. what we're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah exactly. And this may be possibly the most different for this one because you're not seeing the student mm -hmm. on stage. Um, but the guidance we provided and for 
judges watching um, video recitations, you'll likely see um, students in a horizontal orientation, roughly from the mid torso up. Um, and exactly what Justine said, um, seeing if the student exudes confidence, um, no nervous tics or gestures, um, their body should really be at ease with the poem. Um, and that's what you'll continue to judge even through a virtual contest. Okay, next we'll head on to voice and articulation. For this category, judges should consider the student's projection, pace, rhythm, intonation, and proper pronunciation. Students should project, but without mistaking shouting for good volume or projection, they should also proceed at a fitting and natural pace. Students may speak too quickly from nervousness, which can make the poem more difficult to understand. Students also may speak too slowly where the language may sound awkward or so slowly that it creates a false drama that kind of obscures the meaning of the poem. Ultimately, the pace should be fitting to the poem and any changes in tone should be appropriate to the subject matter. Also with rhymed poems or poems with the regular meter, students should be careful not to fall into a sing-song rhythm or affect changes that distract from the poem. Um, and proper pronunciation is a must. Uh, students need to pronounce each word in the poem correctly. Um, but that being said, students from a particular region of the country, students who are English language learners that recite from with an accent, um, please do not take that into consideration when scoring. Those students should not be penalized. Um, Justine, do you have anything else you'd like to add for voice and articulation? Oh, uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory, I, I, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the volume shouldn't be um, that big of a thing as, as it would be in person. Um, you know, sometimes the students are very, you know, shy or scared sometimes and you can't really hear them. Um, I would say probably the most common that we would hit is either the really nervous talking to mm -hmm. them or the we're going to make this really deep and profound and stretch everything out so yeah. we yeah. want something like that feels a little bit more i mean it's along with the physical presence a, a natural way mm -hmm. of, of doing this a natural way of, of presenting the poem and and standing in front of people and presenting. Right. um and how they articulate the poem should like fit the poem itself and any pauses they should take um, should be appropriate. And that's something judges um, can determine. Um, I also know something we've heard from past judges that they found helpful to do if they have time to read some of the poems aloud themselves, um, just to become more familiar with the poem and give deeper insight. And um, yeah, I know it helps to hear it aloud um, prior to here, seen it um, in competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, um, we'll discuss dramatic appropriateness. In this category, judges will consider whether the student's interpretive and performance choices enhance the audience's understanding and enjoyment of the poem without overshadowing the poem's language. A strong performance relies on a powerful internalization of the poem rather than excessive gestures or unnecessary emoting. Recitation is about conveying a poem's sense through its language. Students shouldn't be acting out their poem word by word. Uh, the student represents the poem's voice and not a character's. Overall, the interpretation subtly underscores the meaning of the poem without really becoming the focal point of the recitation. Low scores in this category should result from inappropriate tone and inflection, distracting gestures, singing, or unnecessary emoting. This may be one of the more trickier categories to judge. Justine, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, this one is maybe a little bit more tricky because some of the things fall into other categories like the voice and articulation and, and um, the physical presence, but with like gesturing um so you obviously you don't want the I, it was the first year i was working on this so maybe about 
12, 13 years ago. Um, I went to a school contest and um, one of the students was doing Jabberwocky and came out and acted out the poem like he was stabbing things and throwing himself across the stage. And that's an obvious, you know, uh, an, an obvious example of don't do that. Um, and of course, some hand gestures are fine, but it's, you know, it's basically, it's like, if you're acting out the poem, if they, if every time they say like the sky, they point up and, you know, like the heart and like a little bit is, you know, as long as it feels natural and, you know, good to the poem, but if, if anything they're doing and anything is, um, distracting you and you're not it's not the you're kind of not paying attention then to the poem you're paying attention to them mm -hmm. um, then it's it's taking away and the the drama is becoming a bit too much for the poem to handle at that point yeah uh, no exactly and it's up to the students to decide um, whether to use gestures. We've seen really strong recitations where a student doesn't decide to use gestures and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the flip side, we've seen strong recitations where the student does use gestures. Um, but, um, so it's, the students are really, you know, the vessels of the poem um, and should rely on the communication and language rather than what Justine said, acting out every single word um, of the poem. We'll move on to the next criterion. Um, next is evidence of understanding. This category evaluates the student's comprehension of a poem. The poet's words should take precedence and the student who understands the poem best will be able to voice it in a way that helps the audience to understand the poem better. To do this, a student must effectively use intonation, emphasis, tone, and style of delivery. Students should illuminate, not muddle, meaning, illusions, tonal shifts, and themes. Irony and other nuances should be captured as well. A lower score would result in this category if the interpretation obscures the meaning of the poem. Justine, do you have anything else to add for evidence of understanding? This is mostly a, a kind of a, a know it when you see it. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a, a definite when you, um, and it could be, and we're not saying that there is only one interpretation of a poem, of course, that there are millions interpretations, but you know when um, a student is interpreting it incorrectly <laughs> rather than correctly. Um, and you can tell, um, you know, there, there have been many times where I've seen a recit recitation that, um, actually brings like new insight to the poem so it's almost like a new interpretation mm -hmm. which is fantastic and that you know what we're looking for those those moments are, are what this is all about really um but it you know if if something is meant to be um like ironic and a bit humorous and they they kind of catch on that and play with that a little bit and and show the you know really convey that to the audience um but if they do that if they like add a bit of humor when it's not really needed or you know it's it's kind of like a scratch you can you you know you're like ooh that that's not that's not totally appropriate <laughs> um so yeah this yeah. is something like when you after you watch a few of the things after you watch a few of the recitations and videos and whatnot you start to catch like oh okay like these these students really understand the poem enough to give it back to an audience yeah exactly and um you mentioned va different valid interpretations, which is totally true. And just something for judges to note, um, it's very likely you'll hear the same poem more than once. Um, we see that at all levels of competitions, there's trends of poems from year to year. Um, and just as a reminder that you're just evaluating that student um, against the evaluation criteria, you're not comparing um, individual students. And um, yeah, there may be multiple valid interpretations of the poem. And you might hear two different um, recitations of the same poem that it, each student brought to light in a different way um, and maybe as equally valid. Um, so something else to think about for this category as well. Okay, next we'll head to our last um, category, overall performance. 
This category evaluates the overall success of the performance. Judges should ask themselves how impressed you were by the performance. Did the student in the recitation honor the poem? Did all the elements of the other categories come together to create something new and moving in terms of interpretation? Um, sometimes a performance really moves us so greatly and we're not sure why um, an overall performance can account for that impression. Also with this category, um, you may also consider if the student style of delivery represented range when appropriate. Um, like we we're talking earlier with evidence of understanding. So does a student change their style with each poem or does each poem get the same treatment regardless of the content and language? In other words, are they stuck in a particular style or delivery or did they sh show a diversity of approach? Um, for instance, a somber poem about grief um, should have a different approach with, from a satiric poem that has humor. Um, in addition to range, judges should consider the complexity of the poem, which is a combination of its content, language, and length, uh, bearing in mind that a longer poem is not necessarily a more complex one. A lower score in this category would result from recitations that are poorly presented, ineffective in conveying the meaning of the poem, or conveyed in a manner inappropriate to the poem. This category is also more heavily weighted than the other categories so far with a value up to nine points. The previous categories were a value up to six points. Um, Justine, anything else to add for our overall performance? Just that the um, our reasoning and weighing this one a bit more um, is because we understand that um, with poetry and performance and performance of poetry, there is a certain intangible quality that mm -hmm. when you don't know exactly, you, you just like that performance just wowed you. It just, it did something and you can't maybe narrow down exactly what it was, especially because this isn't something, you know, this isn't a performance that you're watching and then ruminating about and re going back to and you, where you can really parse that out. This we understand is, you know, it's, you have a limited time to do this and it's it's a fast turnaround. Um, and so this is the the way that we, we tried to kind of balance that out. And also to, to, you know, if you watch a recitation, you go, wow, like that was a really tough poem and they nailed it, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, it's, it's kind of a, a catch all, um, but it also, it, we try to, to catch everything that the other categories kind of don't. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and scores of nine should be pretty rare and used for exceptional performances. Um, and when you're just starting out judging for your very first round, um, you may want to start judging out more conservatively that first round. So you just so you have room to grow um, and change throughout. Um, while you're judging different rounds. Um, now we'll go over um, some tips and some best practices um, for judges. Uh, first off, uh, remember to watch the student and not the score sheet or whatever online platform you're judging or submitting your scores on. Um, it's more tempting than you think, um, but it's really important for judges to really focus on each student's individual performance and give them their full attention um, and then direct your attention afterwards um, to submitting your scores and score sheet. Um, next, um, score each category independently and carefully. Um, for instance, you generally shouldn't just be marking down all threes and or all fours and just submitting it. Um, really think about each criteria on physical president, presence, evidence of understanding, et cetera. Um, think about each of those categories individually um, before submitting your scores. Um, also double check your scores before submitting them um, and just make sure you have a score entered for each criterion. This will just help the contest process to go more smoothly. 
um, and help your contest organizer out. Um, and remember that you're, you can't change scores after they're submitted. Um, and then also judge the student's performance and their recitation solely on the Poetry Out Loud evaluation criteria, and uh, not their poem choice or the quality of video. Um, one of the great things about Poetry Out Loud is students should um, choose their own poems and these are poems that they are connected to. So if they're reciting a poem from a poet or just a particular style that's not really your thing, you're not connected to, um, please leave those biases behind um, and just judge the student based off the evaluation criteria. Um, and the same goes for the quality of video for virtual contests. Um, I expect judges will see a range um, and most students likely will be doing this from their homes. Um, so don't bring any um, judgment of the quality of video or audio or their background. Again, you're just judging um, their recitation based off of the evaluation criteria. We'll go over a few more tips here. Um, avoid conflicts of interest. Um, judges should not interact with the students, the parents or teachers prior to the competition. Um, and if you feel like you might have a conflict of interest, um, please speak up and the sooner the better. Disclosure of any potential conflicts of interest or the appearance of a conflict will really help organizers preserve the integrity of the contest. And there's more information about this towards the back of the judges guide. Um, also, remember that judging is an individual process. Uh, judges should not convene. Um, judges are not discussing their scores, they're not discussing their recitations um, that they're watching. Um, even though you're on a judging panel, it is very, it's, it's, you're bringing your expertise and you're submitting the scores. Um, it's not, um, judging is not a group effort or a discussion. So remember that it is an individual process. Um, if judging live virtually um, to the best of your ability, try to find a space with a steady internet connection. Um, I know that's not always possible, but if you know, for instance, that your office or living room, that's where your Wi-Fi works best, um, please just find a space um, where there's steady internet connection, um, of course things happen, um, but just for the day to go as smoothly as possible. Um, and then also if you're judging um, asynchronously, um, keep your judging style consistent. Um, and this goes for all judges, but if you're receiving the videos um, from your contest organizer to judge on your own time and you have a deadline, um, please, watch um, you know, the videos we recommend just once and submit scores afterwards. And if you're able to have just sort of a bulk of time to do your judging, um, that's great too, um, but just treat every student and video the same. Um, and then keep your judging style consistent goes for all judges, um, just to be consistent with yourself um, and not all of a sudden go from being super generous to super conservative and back and forth. Um, if you're able to be consistent, um, that's great. Um, and then finally, we mentioned this again because um, we hear it has helped a lot of judges is to practice scoring, um, especially if you're new um, to Poetry Out Loud, this is your first time judging Poetry Out Loud. Um, it's really helpful to watch um, student performances beforehand and just to get a sense of recitations and what you might be seeing at your competition um, and just the pacing of the event, um, if you're judging at a live contest, um, it's really important. So um, practice scoring. Um, now we're heading into the question and answer section. Um, so if you haven't already, um, this is your time to submit your questions to the Q&A box, um, and we'll do our best to answer questions. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen right now so we can take a look at the questions coming in. Um, 
we received a question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we received a question about physically recommend standing. Um, if the student is able to stand for their performance, I I think that is the best route to go. Um, to go. Um, just so and that mid torso view and so you can see your gestures. I think that's really the easiest and um, best way to go forward. Um, yeah, if there if we were in present, you know, if we were in a any other year yes. this year, um, if a, a student is able to um, physically stand for the duration of their recitation, then um, we ask that they do do that. Yeah, we're trying to mimic um, the in-person event as much as possible. Of course, some things are will be different, um, but we're trying to remain as consistent as possible. Um, from that, um, let's see another question coming in. Yeah, so we received a question about um, if a student in a pre recorded virtual competition seems to be looking off camera or if they're receiving help from someone. Um, or if they're receiving help from the prompter would that be a deduction in their accuracy score. Um, we recommended contest organizers in our state coordinators if they're able to to um, you know have their students just attest that yes um, I memorized my poem I didn't edit my video um, etc so for organizers um, you know holding um, video submission contests we encourage you to do that um, just as an extra layer of yes the student for sure did um, memorize their um, performance. Um, do you have anything else to add to that, Justine? No, um, I, I, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work in every state. Um, but if the organizers do get a chance to see these videos before the judges do, let's say, um, if it's a not if it's an asynchronous one, um, mm -hmm. I would hope they would flag that um, for this, you know, and if they, if they notice that a student is getting getting help. Um, if it's live, then, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, hopefully again, they, they should be attesting that they're not doing that. Um, and if it's, if it's blatantly obvious, then yes, I mean, I would, I would take that into account obviously in, in judging and, and possibly beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, Looking at other questions, um, yeah, well, just to provide some more information about um, the national finals, um, we will be having a video submission um, competition um, where we will be gathering the judges prior to the to any um, airing of the contest and showing the videos one by one um, to the judges and having them submit scores to us through a digital platform. Um, and then a pre-recorded um, version of the competition will be shown um, on May 2nd for the national semifinals. Um, and then the top three students from each semifinal will advance to the national finals, um, which will be on May 27th. And they'll be reviewed by a different set of judges um, ahead of time as well. Um, I see a question on the on the scoring sheet. Overall performance has one, two, three, five, seven, nine. Should it be scored one through nine? Um, no, that it, like that is correct. I know it might seem odd, but the scores for overall performance are one, two, three, five, seven, nine. Um, and we have an online tally sheet um, for contest organizers um, to tally their scores, and it's. You're not able to enter like eight or a six for those categories for, um, for overall performance. Um, 
So yes, technically it is one through nine, but it is one, two, three, five, seven, nine um, for those. Let's see. Yeah, we, we're seeing some um, information or questions come in um, about either the filming requirements or st standards um, for students. Um, and we encourage you to look at the filming requirements um, and tips guide um, that we have on poetryoutloud.org. Um, students may use a cell phone or their laptop a tablet um to to record um and yes we're um asking generally from a head to mid torso medium shot um from the website too but if you have any more questions about that um you can follow up with us directly um but there is some more guidance on filming requirements um on our website It doesn't look like other questions are coming in at this moment. Um, just one other thing um, to mention for judges, even though it's virtual, but if you're having a live event or live judging session, um, I, please be on time. Um, I know that sounds like a simple thing, but that's always something we say for in-person contests too. Um, and also to ask um, questions of your organizer, if you have any, um, we know with a lot of virtual contests, this is a different process this year. Um, so please be in touch um, with your contest organizer um, or if you have any technical difficulties or any other um, questions they may answer. And we hope you have a good time um, judging poetry out loud. The students are incredibly impressive um, and we're really excited um, to hear about virtual contests happening across the country um, and it's, really inspiring to see the students um, recite poetry. Um, so yeah, thank you for being a judge um, for Poetry Out Loud. Um, with that being said, I think we'll, we will end the session um, for today. Um, thank you all so much um, for coming to today's judge webinar. Um, we really appreciate your attendance. Thank you all.